It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Denver Broncos and the Miami Dolphins. And it's all up next. It is a tropical, hot summer afternoon, so staying hydrated is going to be key for the players, the fans, even the commentators as we are at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Today we've got a fun AFC matchup on tap as it'll be the Denver Broncos taking on the Miami Dolphins. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. At CD, the Dolphins, they've got some high hopes for 2023. They feel like they've got the pieces to make a run. They need a little bit of health but they think they can be right there in the AFC East. And they'll want every game to be a track meet because speed is their calling card. If they're able to sprint out there ahead of people and make them chase, they'll be tough to reel in. Meanwhile, for the visiting Broncos, they're hoping to get this offense on track in year two under Russell Wilson. Charles, I wouldn't have believed this. They were the lowest scoring offense in the league last year, just 16.9 points per game. And that means you have to change things up, and they certainly have. You talk about operating under new management. This team certainly is. I expect this offensive production to really rise. And Russell Wilson, I think we'll see much more of the Russell Wilson we've seen in the past. Here's Jason Sanders now to get this one started. And we are underway from Hard Rock Stadium. And this taken in at the goal line. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Well, the Broncos offense gets set to go to work and at the helm in his second season wearing orange and blue, Russell Wilson. And I think that even after a decade in the NFL, he doesn't get enough credit for not just his consistency, but his brilliant play and leadership as well. He's won a Super Bowl in Seattle. He's led his team to another Super Bowl opportunity also in Seattle. His numbers are always terrific, almost always in the Pro Bowl, and all his team does is win. This guy's a natural leader. Wilson going to come out throwing. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Out routes are always timing routes, and if the timing's off just a little bit, it can really throw off a play. It looked like he led him a little too much there. Yeah, there was a fraction of a second because he caught it, just couldn't stay in bounds. They go play action with Wilson. Man open. He's got it complete to Cortland Sutton. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. So for this defense, a tall order ahead trying to defend against Russell Wilson. Charles, your keys for how they might go about keeping him in check? Well, before we even get to the keys, let's start with the problems he presents because he feels pressure so well. He's got a great sixth sense, maybe even a seventh and an eighth. He knows where the pressure's coming from. He knows how to slide away from it, sometimes run away from it, and then he finds good throwing lanes to deliver downfield. So to me, is that pressure inside, big, tall guys to make him try and throw over them and make his height work against him. We're scoreless after one. Broncos football as we begin quarter number two as they've got it with a first and ten. Again, Wilson being chased out left. And it'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. And they'll come up second and seven. Wilson. He's got his 6'5 receiver. That's Tim Patrick. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. 
They'll throw on first down with Wilson. His throw incomplete. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and ten. Actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. Now a second and ten. Throwing is Wilson. Short throw caught by Dosich. They had able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. Wilson will throw again. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to convert on third and short yardage with a gain of four. Here's Wilson. Forced out to his left. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. You know what I like about that play? He didn't try to do too much on first down. He took what the defense gave him, put together a solid game to bring up second and manageable. Now they have a couple of plays to pick up just a few yards and a new set of downs. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. From the left hash, this from 39. The kick by Lutz is good. And we have action on the scoreboard just before halftime. It's 3-0. So our initial drive this afternoon results in three. Not sure that that's a statement necessarily, but getting points on the road, never a bad thing. You're exactly right about that. I love how you framed it, right? Not sure it's a statement. But at the same time, you're putting something out there, aren't you? Letting them know, hey, we came to play today. Maybe time for one play on offense. Seven seconds to go in the half as the kick is away. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Now Tua Tungabailoa gets set to lead this Dolphins offense for the first time. Injuries overshadowed a great season from Tua last season. He led a Miami passing game that was one of the best in the league, and even more importantly, took them to the postseason for the first time in six years. That jump they were looking for from him, it absolutely occurred. All that remains is to snap this once, and that'll do it for the first half of play. So we come upon halftime with the visiting Broncos taking the lead to the locker room as we send you up to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much, and welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. If you missed the first half, there's not much to get you caught up on. Just the lone field goal accounting for the entirety of the scoring. A 3-0 game to this point, as both defenses have been strong so far. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far.
These offenses seemingly still back at the hotel for the first half. 3-0 our score as the second half gets underway. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. So Miami coming out for their second drive. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well and they've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. We've seen these defenses make enough opportunistic plays to keep this one low scoring. Flying around, making plays on the ball, and we see yet another errant throw as a result. A good action to this point in the third quarter. Just a three-point game. Second and ten. Throwing now is Tungavailoa. That one caught by Tyreek Hill. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. From the gun, it's Tua. And that is incomplete. And so many times we look at the opening drive of the third quarter as a tone setter, and many coaches do emphasize it. And that's a strong performance there defensively to force the incompletion and, more importantly, force a quick punting situation. The Dolphins will send out the punter now. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. And he'll get this away into the humid Florida sky. It's a return of four following a 42-yard punt. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. Denver offense at the line, ready to go. And Charles, we've seen almost three full quarters now, and neither offense can really get it going. Neither has hit the end zone, and neither side seemingly can make that big play. But the game hasn't been devoid of action because these two defenses, they've taken over and they've slugged it out. But I think you're exactly right. We're at that stage of the game now where one of these offenses, if they make a big play, that could be the difference. Third quarter from Miami. This is second and ten. A man who was lost for the year in week four last season is Javante Williams. Now a timeout called for by the defense. It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in this third quarter. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. On third down, Wilson. That is caught. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Miami. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now the Dolphins will use the last of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game.
The win for the Broncos, seemingly assured they go down to a knee. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This to swell the lead to six. The kick by Lutz is good. And that will add three more to their lead. It pushes it up to six. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, they're a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. Well, and a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. Will Following Lutz the made field goal, field goal, Lutz to kick it away. And he returns this to the 22. The Dolphins take over first and 10. I got you there. They're on 22 yard line. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do this. This is first and 10. Now Tua. That's to the sideline and incomplete. So after all of this, it comes down to one final play. And just think of what it's going to be because from this distance, you've got to be prepared for everything. Hook and laterals, tip balls, you name it. A lot of laterals after a catch. Just got to be prepared, stay on your feet defensively and tackle someone. One final try for Tungavailoa. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And this is incomplete. Oh, it looked like he had a pretty good line on that one. That would have been a big play, but he could not pull it in. So this one will wind up a Denver victory. And not all W's are created equal, CD. And this one came in shutout fashion. Well, their offense certainly didn't need to do anything, right? They could take the day off, and they did. But the defense, they carried them in a big way. Yeah, look, the offense, obviously stuff to work on, but they did enough, and the defense carried the load. Well, you know what they say, it's always fun to work on things if it didn't go well in your game with a victory in your pocket. And that's what they've got going on.